welcome to a new episode of Make Thrift Buy. This is the show where you send in clothes or accessories that you found on the internet and then I do my best to recreate them. Today's challenge was sent in by Danielle Romero and as soon as I saw this dress I knew that I had to recreate it because I find high neck tops and swing dresses really flattering for my body shape and I'm also going through this kind of stretchy fabric renaissance right now where all I want to do is work with stretchy fabrics so this was perfect. The original dress is from Urban Outfitters and oh boy do I have a lot of problems with Urban Outfitters. I could also find absolutely nothing about how the dress was made so I really had no qualms in trying to recreate this dress for myself. So let's begin. To make this dress I'm basically going to modify an existing pattern because that's way easier than making an entire new pattern from scratch. Because the dress is really similar to the DIY high neck crop top that I made a few weeks ago I am simply going to modify the pattern that I used in that video. First I made an exact duplicate of this crop top pattern using recycled newspaper as my pattern paper. Then I widened the neck and the armholes because this dress has a slightly larger neckline and bigger armholes than the crop top. Then I ruled a straight line across at the underarm or the bust line and cut off everything below it. This is going to make up the very top of my new pattern. I put this pattern piece at the top of a bunch of newspaper that I could draw a dress pattern onto. The very next thing that I did was to measure the length that I wanted the dress to be, from the top of my shoulder, adding one inch for seam allowances. I then transferred this measurement onto my pattern, starting at the shoulder point and going straight down, making a mark where the measurement ends. I then cut the newspaper straight across from this mark. The next thing you need to do is add or subtract newspaper from this part of the pattern until its width measures approximately 23 inches. Then I drew a straight line from the armhole point on the old pattern down to this corner. And there's my swing dress pattern. Well, almost. I tried this pattern out first on a white floral jersey, but I ended up with a different hemline than what I was going for. I did realize this halfway through making the dress, but I decided that I liked the accident and I finished it off like this anyway. Accidents can sometimes turn out awesome, but I also still wanted to try and recreate the actual dress itself. And to do this, I needed to make one more modification to the pattern. First, I measured how long the dress was from the bust line to the bottom, down this edge, because this is the shortest point of the dress. And I want to make the rest of the dress this length. I measured this to be 24.5 inches. So I then made marks like this, 24.5 inches from the bust line, right along the bottom of the skirt. And this will hopefully now be the final dress pattern. To make this dress, I used black rib jersey. I find that rib jerseys can often be annoying to hem, especially this particularly crappy jersey that I got from Spotlight. So if you're able to get your hands on it, I would recommend using a lightweight jersey knit that isn't ribbed. I recently also learned a trick for cutting out patterns, where you place paper underneath your fabric and put your pattern on top pin and cut through both the fabric and the paper underneath at the same time. Make sure you're placing your pattern on the fabric's fold. The paper underneath stabilizes the fabric while you cut it, ensuring that you cut out exactly the same shape as your pattern. Once I used the pattern to cut out the fabric and unfolded it, it looked like this. Then I simply repeated this to get two identical pieces. So now I have two of these pieces. One makes up the front and the other is the back. I place them right sides together and then I sew them together at the shoulders and the sides. I also make sure to add pins before sewing. To sew them together I'm using a zigzag stitch. Then to hem the bottom of the dress while the shoulder and the side seams are still on the outside. I fold the fabric at the bottom of the dress up half an inch and then sew over the top. As I mentioned before I was having a bit of difficulty with hemming this ribbed fabric even though I was using a walking foot attachment which generally feeds the fabric through evenly so I used my other trick. And this is the same trick that you can use on knit fabrics if you don't own a walking foot. While I was sewing, I placed tissue paper underneath the hem and I sewed through both the fabric and the paper. Then after sewing, I simply tore the tissue paper off and then also spent about five to 10 minutes picking out the little pieces of tissue paper from the stitches. But it worked and it gave me a fairly flat hem. The next step is to add neck and armhole cuffs. And I do this in exactly the same way as I did in my DIY crop top video, except that I used a slightly thinner neck cuff. If you do want a more detailed explanation of the following process, then you should go and watch that video, but I'll also explain it really quickly here for good luck. I measure the circumference of the neck hole, which is 11 inches, take half an inch off this measurement, and cut out a rectangle which is 10 and a half by 2 and a half inches. Then I fold this in half, sew down here, turn it the right way around, Fold it in half lengthways, quarter it with pins, quarter the neck hole with pins, 
and I sew them together with the cuff on the front of the right side of the dress piece with the raw edges matching. I use a zigzag stitch and I match up each set of pins by stretching the fabric so that each set of pins is aligned. And then I do the exact same thing for each of the armholes. So with that step completed, I now have some pretty neck and armhole cuffs and it also means that the dress is done. And now the question is, how did I go? That was it and my conclusion is 100% all this dress really is is an extension of my high neck crop top tutorial and if you do work it out you'll probably also get addicted to making them like I did and make a whole bunch because once you've got your pattern going they only take about an hour to make anyway if you do try this or any of my other projects out don't forget to tag it with the hashtag DIY Annika if you upload the photo to Instagram don't forget to keep leaving suggestions for new challenges for me to try and I'll see you all for my next video bye